Summary of Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl Man's Search for Meaning is a non-fiction book about Viktor Frankl's time in Nazi death camps and his method for helping people, called logotherapy. Frankl never tells the story of his time in the camps in a straight line. Instead, he focuses on how the daily problems of camp life affected the mental health of the people who lived there. So, he only talks about his life experiences in length when they can be used to prove his psychological ideas. Frankl says that, based on what he saw in other prisoners, the average prisoner goes through three mental stages, shock in the first few days after he arrives, apathy and emotional death once he gets used to camp life, and disillusionment with life after he gets out. Most of the first part of experiences in a concentration camp is about what happened to prisoners who didn't care about anything and how Frankl was able to avoid this. Frankl's theory is based on the idea that a man's deepest goal is to find meaning in his life, and that if he can do that, he can survive anything. Frankl made sense of what happened to him in the concentration camp by choosing that he would use his pain to become a better person. He didn't give up and accept that he was doomed. Instead, he decided to accept his pain. Frankl says that a man's life path is affected by the situations he faces, but in the end, he is free to choose his own path. Even when things are at their worst, a person always has the choice of how to deal with them. Frankl says that people can find meaning in their lives in three ways, through work, through love, and through pain. During his three years in the camps, Frankl kept his will to meaning or desire to live a meaningful life, alive by focusing on the meanings he could make for himself. Frankl kept himself going by thinking about the work he wanted to do after he left the camp. He also tried to find meaning in his pain. In particular, he wanted to redo the logotherapy book that the Nazis took away from him when he got to Auschwitz. Frankl also found hope in love, and thinking about his wife helped him get through some of the hardest times in his life. Frankl was able to stay living through his work, his love, and his pain because he felt responsible for and to them. He says that people can't figure out the big picture, or supermeaning, of life. Instead, he says, we should look for ways to make each moment worthwhile. Every person has a special job that only he or she can do, and it is that person's job to do it. In the second part of the book, Logotherapy in a Nutshell, Frankl goes into more depth about his thoughts about logotherapy. He says that the will to find meaning in life can become existentially disappointed, which can lead to noogenic neuroses. In other words, a man can have mental problems that need to be fixed if he can't figure out what his life is for. Frankl says that everyone should try to be in a state of noodynamics, in which there is a strain between what you have done and what you want to do. Frankl thought that this friction between the past and the present was important for a healthy mind. Frankl helps people who need therapy get over their worries and fears by having them do something called paradoxical intention. In this method, the person tries to bring about the very thing he fears. In the end, logotherapy tries to help its patients set goals, like getting rid of a fear or making it through a terrible situation, and find ways to reach those goals in a useful way. Frankl says at the end of his book, man is that being who made the gas chambers at Auschwitz. He is also that being who went into those gas chambers standing up, with the Lord's Prayer or the Shema Yisrael on his lips. Frankl thinks that even though people can do bad things, no one person has to be bad. Every person has the ability to change the way he acts and thinks in any situation. In his afterward, Frankl says again that this belief is the foundation of his tragic optimism, or his belief that it is important to say yes no matter what. About the author Viktor Frankl grew up in Vienna at a time when a lot of progress was being made in the area of psychology. Early on, he was interested in the topic, and as a medical student, he set up suicide watch plans that worked every time. When Frankl finished his internship, he started his own private practice, during the German rule of Austria in 1938, Jews like Frankl were not allowed to see patients who were not Jews. Two years later, Frankl was put in charge of the brain department at the Jewish Rothschild Hospital. In 1942, the Nazis arrested Frankl, his wife Tilly, and his parents and sent them to death camps. Frankl's wife and parents died in the camps, 
but he lived for three years in four of them. After that, he wrote a lot of books and taught at many places. He is best known for his book Man's Search for Meaning and for starting the fields of logotherapy and existential therapy. At 92, he died of heart failure. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.